Hey folks, time for another Q&A on Earth's catastrophe cycle. Let's jump right into it here. First question. These are all related to the how high up do we have to be? How much altitude is enough altitude? Well, of course, that's very different if you're right next to a coastline versus 2,000 miles away from a coastline. But what I want you to remember is this from the book Next End of the World. Wave run-up height is much different than actual wave height. And when it comes to the sloshback, maybe that's less important. But remember, the initial tsunami, the inertially driven initial tsunamis from the till, those aren't going to have a huge wave. It's going to be like a, a fast moving high tide. There's not going to be a huge crashing wave like in the movie 2012. But yet that wave is going to get very, very high or not really wave. I should say the depth of the inundation is going to get very, very high. So if you can just picture this and realize that it's got the inertia and the power of the entire ocean pushing behind it, that can probably give you some kind of a good idea. And then remember that last time the Rockies didn't stop the Pacific. We are, of course, turning back now. So it's going to be the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico that, that attack. And no, I don't think the Appalachians are going to stop um, the Atlantic, which comes in towards the East Coast either. And the Gulf of Mexico could easily run up into the Great Lakes, maybe even Canada. Next question. What about propane? and propane accessories. Damn it, Bobby. Um, propane scares the bejesus out of me in this event simply due to the induction. The induced electric currents that are going to happen from a solar micronova, let alone, you know, I mean, they scare me from something like a Carrington level event, which I've said many times, looks like it's probably going to take out power before the main event. But the induced currents from a micronova, I mean, we're talking very, very high risk of explosion there. I don't plan on being anywhere near propane when this time comes. Although up until then, and if you manage to have some propane after the power has been taken out and it hasn't blown up, yeah, I guess use it to survive uh, while the power is out, especially if it's cold where you are and you need to use it for something. You see the sun turn red, however, get away from the propane. Still getting questions about where the Earth is going to end up after the pole shift. I'm just going to throw the animation on there. This is what the world is going to look like. It goes from here and back again every 12,000 years. This is how you get the alternating layers of tropical polar, tropical polar fossils. The major white found in the Arctic with Project Nanook. This is what you're looking at right there. Next question. If there is not a crustal shift at the 6,000 year half cycle mark, why do we have such amazing floods then too, like the NOAA event? Well, the answer to that is how rapidly there is polar ice melt during those events. Don't forget that the sun, just because, it, just because there's not a crustal shift every 6,000 years, you know, that's on the 12,000 year cycle, doesn't mean there's not an incredibly powerful solar flare or series of solar flares at that time. Remember this paper? It's not just an 11 year sunspot cycle and then all of a sudden we get something scary at 12,000 years. There are centennial level flares. There are 500 year flares. There are th millennial flares. And then there's the 3,000 and 6,000 year super flares. And that 6,000 year super flare, as you might remember from the interview I did with Robert Schock, big shout out to him by the way, um, that could literally melt the polar ice in a couple of days, if not a day. Um, he has even entertained the notion that it could have happened in several hours during one solar flare event or super flare event. And so when you have that, that's going to cause an unfathomable amount of sloshing into the oceans, um, almost imaginable, potentially as bad as the crustal shift. Uh, last question. How do we stop all of the negative comments there are about the observers, about me? You don't, and you don't want to. We are exactly where we should be. So an interesting thing on Facebook the other day, there are people on earth who are not meant to evolve. They were just meant to show you what it looks like when you don't. And just like Billy used to say, ain't everybody gonna make it. You don't take anti-aircraft fire when you're over the middle of the ocean. You take flak when you're over the target. And not only is this a good way to know when you're on point, but if the matrix isn't fighting you back, you're not a threat to it.
Take pride in it. Wear that badge. Like many of you wear the badge of getting thrown in Facebook jail. You're like, yeah, I, I know I'm doing something right if I got thrown in Facebook jail. Yeah, we wear that as observers as well. Anyway, I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.